The 10th of April, 1993, a Saturday. ENCA Africa reporter Tumaule Muhlaudi was 12 years old and playing an imaginary game of World Cup football with his friends in this park. He didn't know it then, but he was about to become one of the last people to see Chris Harney alive. Every time he'd greet us, he'd come and say, Hello, little comrades, how are you? And he'd want to find out how it was at school, if we were playing well together, and he wanted to find out, you know, how everything was in our little lives. And I was always fascinated by this big burly man who would, you know, go out of his way to come and ask us about our little our little day and our little lives and we had no idea who it was and, and in fact uh, because he was jogging a lot of the time that we'd see him I assumed and because you use the term little comrades that he was training for the comrades marathon. After he said goodbye to McLeodie and his friends Hani jogged to a nearby shopping center. He went to the post office to send money to his daughter who needed to pay her university fees. It was there that Janusz Volosh would see him. Inadvertently, the shooter, who had not come to shoot him on that day, but was doing the checkups, what we call reconnaissance, I saw him as, couldn't believe, his, his luck, and followed him. The rest, and, and the shooter says that himself, this, this Wallace person, uh, and, and followed him back from the shops. Um, and in a cowardly manner executed him. On that particular day we heard what sounded like, uh, I assumed at the time it was fireworks, um, popping sounds. There is a time to cry. I saw Chris Honey dead. We realized that, uh, you know, uh, laying there in the, in the driveway is Mr. Comrades, you know, someone had, had shot that nice man. It was so, so sad because of, I remember when we were coming here, uh, um, Tokyo was kneeling down and he was like trying to kind of talk to him and he was kneeling down and he was like crying and he was like screaming and... Yeah, I still remember that blood, you know, like it was such a lot of blood that I've never seen so much blood. This passage was exactly like that. Rachel LaRoutler later bought Hani's home, which she's tried to keep as close as possible to its original state. A bullet hole in the garage door still serves as a grim reminder of what happened here. But LaRoutler who has spent the past two decades living in Hani's house, says she always feels safe. I feel very secure. I feel the spirit of Hani is protecting me every time. Lurutla hopes Hani's home will eventually be turned into a tribute to his life. Exactly. Twenty years after his death, it isn't difficult to find people who still miss Hani and who have a myriad of stories to tell about their neighbor. His dream for South Africa, he wanted the country to be comfortable. Everybody must feel free in his country so that we can communicate, no blacks or whites, everybody, we must be the same. For McLeodi, there is some small comfort in the fact that Chris Hani may have seen that future on the morning that he died, in a group of little boys from all races playing football together. Karen Morn, Johannesburg.